Okay. This is the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs Notice of Hearing, Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 at one o'clock. It's being filmed via video conference uh, and some announcements that it's being streamed live on YouTube and in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business um, at a date I'll notify should we have to do that. And the public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. And for people testifying, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. There is a one, lim one minute limit per testifier and we have to enforce it because we have a number of bills. Um, I'll be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure and apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe the names if you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website. You'll find a link at the status page for the measure. So this is, as I've announced, it's the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs hearing for Tuesday, February 1st at one o'clock. Um, and if for whatever reason we cannot see or have your video when you're up to be called, then I'll go on to the next person and then come back to you. Okay, so on that note, let's look at the first list of testifiers. And the first measure is... Uh, oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> I've been reminded. We have our... Um, Vice Chair, Senator Lynn DeCoit. And we have Senator Gil Revere. And at this point, that's all I see. Oh, he's not on video. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh. His camera is not on Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get to see Senator Favela. So he's also there as well. Okay, on that note, on the Senate Bill 2115, uh, first testifier is Carol Matsuoka, Program Specialist for the Judiciary. Good afternoon, um, Chair Nishihara, Vice Chair DeCoy, and members of the committee members. I am Carol Matsuoka, testifying on behalf of the Hawaii State Judiciary. The judiciary strongly supports this measure. SB 2115 is part of the judiciary's legislative package. We stand on our written testimony and I will remain available for any questions. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you, Carol. Next is uh, Dasha Forrester for the Office of the Public Defender. Aloha Chair Nishihara and members of the committee. Um, on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender, we strongly support this bill. We stand on our written testimony and will be available for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Leanne Gillespie, Acting Executive Director for the Office of Youth Services. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Leanne Gillespie. I'm the Administrator for the Office of Youth Services. We stand on our written testimony in support and I'm available for any questions. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, next is Kathy Betts, the director for the Department of Human Services. I guess he's not available. Not present. Not present. Okay. Louis Etterschek, Hawaii Disability Rights. I guess he's not available either. Okay. Uh, Kathy sent in supports and Louis sent in comments. So we move on to Senate Bill 2269. Uh, we have Max Otani for public safety. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, 
Chairman Shihara, Vice Chair Bitcoin, and Max Otani, Director, Department of Public Safety. Uh, the department offers comments for this measure. Uh, we're asking that the language that on the last paragraph not be deleted, be deleted and that is uh, uh, pertains to the lease or purchase of a, of a building. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Chris Caulfield, uh, Executive Director for Emo Alliance. And we in support Liz Ho for uh, UPW Administrator. Liz. Sending some letters of support um, and free. Send in letter of support. But well, this time I'd also like to recognize uh, Senator uh, Baker, who's now on screen. Okay, Senate Bill 2305, uh, Max Otani again. Good afternoon, Mayor Chair. Uh, department stands on our written testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark Patterson testifying for Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission. Mark Patterson in support. Uh, Kat Brady, coordinator for Community Alliance on Prisons. Governor Mark Patterson was, is there just some of the audio issues with the bill? Okay, well, since we Kat, Kathy, uh, Kat Brady is not here. I'm, I'm going back to Mark Patterson. Did you want to uh, make any statements or something? Thank you, Chair Nishihara and uh, Vice Chair DeCoy. I just want to um, state that uh, we stand on our testimony and I'm, I'll be here for any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark. I'm moving on to Sandy Ma, Executive Director for Common Cause. Send in a letter of support. Uh, Carrie Ann Shirota, Policy Director for ACLU. Send in letters of support. Uh, Carla Allison, in support. Carolyn Eaton, in support. Shannon Rudolph, in support. Uh, Wendy Gibson, Viviani. Oh, Sandy. Oh, well, Sandy, you are you are here. Okay, we'll go back to Sandy. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Sandy Ma from Common Cause Hawaii. We stand on our written testimony in support and am, and am available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, now uh, I guess Wendy is not there. So we move on to Elena Funakoshi in support. Robert Burse in support. Does it look it'll say approved? Yes, it does not do that. So just oh I see. Okay. Diana Bechtel in support. Just to run through the list. Members, any questions for those that already have testified? Otherwise, I'm moving on to Senate Bill 2373. Internet Lilly, Office of the Public Defender. Not present, Chair. Not present, thank you. Uh, Max Lotani. Good afternoon again, Chair, Lee members. Max Otani, Department of Public Safety. Uh, we'll stand on our written testimony in support of this measure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Max. Kathy Betts, Department of Human Services. Not present, Chair. Not present, okay. Scott Morishige, for coordinator for the governor's uh, coordination and uh, coordinator of homelessness. Uh, is Scott there? No? 
Oh, you are someone for Scott, but you're not Scott. Okay, go ahead. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. Emma Brahusky on behalf of Scott Warren. She gave the governor's coordinator on homelessness. We stand on our written testimony supporting the intent of this measure and offering comments. Thank you. Thank you. Trevor Abar Zua, Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Members of the committee, the Chamber of Commerce supports this measure and supports all recidivism efforts, especially um, providing the necessary um, support that people need to get back into society and contribute to our economy. Um, we stand on our written testimony and happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Craig Hirai, Director for Budget and Finance. Send in comments. Uh, Alan Johnson, Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition, in support. Because Alan couldn't make it. Denise Boisvert, support. Kim Johansson, in support. Daryl Carlin, in support. And there's a couple of latecomers to Zoom meeting, so you can I just see if there's anybody who is like to testify. Okay. okay. Understand there's some latecomers, they're not uh, showing up on this. Uh, any others that may want to testify, but they weren't uh, on, on this on time, on schedule. Okay, Senate Bill 2433, uh, Director Otani. Good afternoon, Chair. Um, the Department uh, supports the intent of this measure. We are available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kat Brady, Coordinator for Community Alliance and Prisons. Aloha. Oh, Aloha, this Chair Nishihara. <laughs> And welcome, um, Senator DeCoy. <laughs> Kung hi fat choy, everybody. This bill is really important. It expands programs, incentivizes education, and actually has learned to earn opportunities. In other words, it really prepares folks for reentering their community. We urge the committee to pass this bill that will start the paradigm shift from a punitive to a rehabilitative system, one that actually focuses on people's successful reentry. We urge the committee to support this measure and send a good recommendation to JDC and WAM for passage. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Aloha. Thank you. Carolyn Eaton in support. Craig Hirai. I would like to testify. I'm sorry. Oh. I, okay. Carolyn, are you there? I am here. Um, uh, there okay, I am. Fine. Okay, now we got a picture of you. Okay. Yes. Aloha, Chair Nishihara, Vice Chair Decoit, and members of the committee. My name is Carolyn Eaton and I'm honored to participate with you in this important process, an open hearing, which aims to perfect our democracy. This is my first Zoom testimony. Your votes on Senate Bill 2433 are my concern today. Please support it. Its enactment will bring long absent incentives to our folks incarcerated. It offers not one, but several pathways to better life outcomes in their futures. The promise of change for Hawaii communities on every island sings in the language which identifies the new programs so clearly. If confident re-engagement is the so in, in the social, economic, and yes, political life of our communities is the outcome we want for folks who've served their time, this measure and its full funding will help. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, next, we have uh, Sandy Mao. Come, cause. 
Good afternoon again, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Sandy Ma with Common Cause Hawaii. Um, we stand on our written testimony in support and just want to say that educational programs in prisons have shown to uh, uh, substantially help incarcerated people when they are released and really benefit them and society as a whole. Thank you. Uh, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alan Johnson, Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition. Alan sent in letters of support. Uh, Carla Allison in support. Wendy Gibson Viviani in support. Elena Funakoshi in support. Esther Gill in support. Diana Bechtel in support. Alicia Kuhio Kalani in support. Darla Carlin in support. Are there any others that were not on the list that I may have missed? Otherwise, we'll go on to Senate Bill 2452, and we have Les Condo, Office of the Auditor. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Les Condo, I'm the State Auditor. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to offer comments on the proposed audit. Um, for the committee's information, we're currently in the process of completing a self-initiated audit of the Department of Public Safety. Uh, that audit, it focuses on or assesses the department's process for determining the appropriate number of security positions it needs to staff its correctional facilities without regularly resorting to, to the use of overtime. And the key tool that the department and other correctional facilities use is something called the shift relief factor. And that shift relief factor represents the number of full-time positions that are needed to fill an eight hour shift. And it's calculated by using, you know, the actual hours that ACOs are not able to man their posts. You know, whether it's because they're on vacation leave or sick leave, family leave or unimproved leave, uh, or, or, or as well as if they're reassigned to cover to, to cover other posts. So the department's current shift relief factor was calculated in 1970. And uh, that data, to, to be accurate, uh, our report is gonna focus or is focusing on uh, that collection process, the data collection process, because data is key to being able to, to calculate uh, a timely and accurate shift relief factor. So we think the report is gonna be meaningful we think it's gonna provide information to the department as well as to the legislature, should they have uh, uh, bills that where, where the legislatures can consider requests for additional ACL positions. So we expect to issue our report by the end of the month. You know, the department's already seen the draft and based upon certain of their comments, we're in the process of addressing them. Um, I'm not suggesting that the proposed audit is somehow unnecessary because of the audit that we're completing. That, that's not what I'm te my testimony is about. I just wanted the committee to know that we are in the process of completing an audit. It's much narrower than the, than the, um, the issues that the bill identifies. However, I do want the committee to understand that um, we're not gonna be able to assess all those areas without a consultant's help. We also think that the scope of the bill is pretty broad. And because, especially because my understanding is that each of the eight facilities uh, handle things differently. And this bill is asking us to look at all eight facilities. So I suggest the committee consider a couple things. First, if we're going to require a consultant, then I think the timeline for us to deliver the report is pretty ambitious. You know, if we have to procure a consultant, I'm going to guess that we're not going to be able to get that person on board until late August, early September at the earliest. And in addition to that, you know, some of the, um, the my other suggestion is, is perhaps the, uh, the committee would consider narrowing the scope of the audit, specifically identifying okay. those activities that the, the committee is most interested in having us assess. I'm sorry, I talked really fast because I know I only had a minute and I probably went over, but anyway, I'm happy yes, to answer questions. But thank you for, <laughs> okay. for uh, thank allowing you. me to testify. Okay, we're looking forward to that audit. Thank you. Okay, Max Otani, Director. Hi, good afternoon. Max Otani, Director, Department of Public Safety. We will stand on our written testimony offering comments uh, to this measure. It will be available for any questions. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, moving on to Senate Bill 2532. Again, Max, you're up. Yeah. Members, you don't have to ask the members have any questions. Yeah. Well, Max is thinking about that. Did anybody have any questions about the previous speakers? Okay. Chair. Sorry, oh, Chair. Yes. I will not be able to ask questions later on the previous bill that you just said. Um, you can ask it now. You can ask it now, Senator. Okay, yeah. So um, uh, my question is to the auditor is that I don't think you like, I know you want us to streamline it. And I know you guys said you had an ongoing audit. But the ongoing audit you're talking about is um, a volunteering audit. The audit that is coming from the Senate and coming from this committee will be an audit on these issues that's been going long time overdue. So we understand um, you're saying that, you know, it's going to take long time for broadening the scope and all of that. But a lot of these things, if you look into this, um, this morning's paper of talking about our prison system, they're looking like worse than any ghettos and, and whatnot going forward. How are we going to uh, have a have a broad scope if we don't take everything one by one? You know what I mean. I understand you guys want to use a timeline, but these things are way overdue, and it's not for conditions of the prisoners and our adult correctional officers. So we need to stand bold and 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 move forward in getting this thing done um, as best as we can. We cannot cut and paste it and um, chicken scratch it. It's been too long, so. I understand that. So, I mean, you want to elaborate a little bit more on why um, you, you're saying that you guys want to uh, uh, shorten or make the scope smaller? Sure. Uh, first of all, you're right. The audit that we're doing currently, it's self-initiated. Uh, the way that we do the audit, the audit report and the recommendations, it doesn't make a difference if it's self-initiated or it's something that comes out of the legislature through, through an act or through a concurrent resolution. The process is the same. The, the quality of the report should be the same. There's no difference, Senator. In terms of the answer to your question, we only have a limited resource in this office. Uh, so many people, 21 people, including myself, um, and we have a lot of other work that the legislature has us doing in statute, also coming out of the current session. So my concern is that when you have us auditing all of these different activities of the department, that it challenges us to do all of that work plus the other work. And um, it likely will requ require us to kind of pare down that ourselves, just because we're not gonna be able to do all of that work within the time frame requested. So I think that the much better process is for the committee or the legislature to help us. And what I mean by that is it's probably way more um, uh, beneficial to you if you're able to define the areas that are really important for you, you, other legislators, these are the activities that you think are the most important and we should audit those activities. If you just tell us audit everything, the quality of the audit is not gonna be as, as good as if we had a real clear narrow scope. Also, we not, might not be able to cover it all just because of our, our staffing and our other work. So that's the reason why I'm suggesting that it would be, uh, my request would be for the, the legislature, the committee to help us narrow that scope and identify exactly what, what activities you want us to review. Okay, um, okay here, one, one more thing. The, the reason why it, it's, it's so um, broad and I understand you saying it's gonna take a while. But see, if I go grab here, I cherry pick, and I heard that name cherry pick for a long time here. In the Senate, but if we cherry pick, what is, it, what is it fair? <laughs> what is it fair to um, our adult correction offices, inmates, and just the pain for the facility? So I, I and the committee should not make that decision. These these questions and these things of the audit came from the people that worked there at the prison um, and and uh, the inmates that was incarcerated there. So I I cannot. And I, I don't expect my colleagues to cherry pick the way this audit should be, uh, because if we do that, then we're going to say one person is more important than the other person, or one situation is more important than the other situation. And I don't want to be and have my colleagues to be in any position like that. So I, I, I sorry, but yeah, I, I, I cannot see um, us trying to do that uh, 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 democratically. I mean, I don't, I don't see we can, because then we would somebody, we would leave somebody out. And somebody's going to be hurt. This is from them, not from me. 
This was requested by the public and the people that work there and put their lives on the line every day going to work in all these kinds of environment with coronavirus, uh, working late nights on their staff, a lot of things. I, I cannot, I'm sorry. But thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Chair, Chair, Chair may I offer a little comment per, per Senator so that, that maybe there's a better understanding as to our process? Would that be all right? Would be all short of comment. <laughs> okay, my, do my best. Um, yeah, I just want the senator to understand that if we're tasked with auditing, let's say PSD or even even the, the proposed audit, often what we will have to do to kind of narrow the scope just because we do not have the resources is we will go through a risk assessment. In other words, we will do planning work to understand how the department achieves certain of its key activities in terms of its big mission. And then we will do a risk assessment assessing what areas are the most risky? In other words, where they're not doing things and if they're not doing things well, where it, where it may be a big deal. And those are the areas that we will end up creating audit objectives. In other words, those are the areas where we will risk or where we will audit. So I understand the Senator's comments, but for our process, we're trying to identify the most important areas, areas where there is most risk uh, if the operations are not being performed well, and those end up likely to be, you know, part of our audit objectives. So anyway, that's how we would go through it, just so that the Senate understands or the committee understands our, our process. I understand the Senator's comments though. So anyway, thank you for the, for the, for the opportunity. Thank you. Mark Patterson, Correctional System Oversight. Mark. I'm sorry, Senator, are we uh, for 2532? I'll yeah. stand by our testimony and I'm, I'll be here for any questions. Thank you. Trevor Arbarzua. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. Trevor Arbarzua, Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. We do support this bill in the teaching of business and finance in our prisons for employment. We see that the data shows that when inmates get education, when they're, they're incarcerated, that they come out and they are contributing to society and contributing to the economy. So the Chamber of Commerce does support this measure and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Uh, but thank you, Trevor. Craig, here I. Senator, you skipped that step. Um, okay, Senate comments, Ellen Johnson. In support. Shannon Rudolph, in support. Darla, Darla, uh, Carla. Senator, you skipped the maps. No, I didn't. I'm not here. Oh, I'm sorry, Max Otani. All right, good afternoon, Senator. I'm Max. sorry. <laughs> Public safety. Um, we will support the intent of this measure and will be available for any comments or questions you may have. Okay. You. Well, stay on, Max, because you'll be up on Senate Bill 2637, Max. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Max Otani again for the public safety. Again, we offer comments regarding this measure. Um, and I, I believe this bill pertains to furlough and sentence buildings. Uh, yeah. bill questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Cat Brady. Aloha everyone, Kat Brady testifying on behalf of Community Alliance on Prisons. We support this measure. You know, the system is normed to medium security, violent men. Women definitely get lost in the shuffle and they're about 10% of the population. So they don't get the attention that they need. And work furlough is so important for women since most of them are mothers and they need to support their kids. So we hope that, um, you know, they acquire the skills so that their reentry is smooth and successful and they're able to take care of themselves and their family. And we urge you to pass this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you. Craig, you right. Send in support, I mean, comments. Alan Johnson, support. Mark Patterson, Senator. Oh, did I miss him again? <laughs> okay, Mark Patterson, I'm sorry. Did I skip you again? It's okay, Senator. It's a long list that you're going through. I appreciate it. Well, you stand by uh, our written testimony, and I'll be 
hanging up with some questions should there be. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Sandy Ma. Good afternoon again, Chair and Vice Chair, members of the committee, Sandy Ma for Common Cause Hawaii. We stand on our written testimony in support of the bill and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Carla Allison in support. Shannon Rudolph in support. Carolyn Eaton in support. Wendy Gibson Viviani in support. Barbara Polk in support. And Diana Becto in support. And Dara Carlin in support. Okay, it moves. Before I go on, members have any questions? Otherwise, we'll be moving on to Senate Bill 2639. And we have Mark Patterson again. Again, Senator uh, Mark Patterson, Chair, Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission. We stand on our testimony and I'll be here for any questions. Okay, next, Max Otani. Good afternoon, Senator. Max Otani, Department of Public Safety. We we'll stand on our written testimony. We'll be able to questions you have. Okay, Linda Rich, Women's Prison Project. Linda? Yes, uh, thank you. And aloha, Chair Nishihara and Vice Chair Dekoit and the members of the committee. Um, I'm uh, testifying on behalf of the Women's Prison Project and we strongly support Senate Bill 2639. Um, we believe uh, that the research is accurate, which identifies women's risk factors and women's um, uh, needs as being very different from those of men. And we believe that having an assessment tool which accurately uh, identifies both women's risk, um, their risk classification, and the pathways to successful reintegration into the community um, are critical. Um, so we strongly support a validated gender responsive risk and needs assessment tool that would align women's ass um, assessment with their pathways research show to be um, important to identifying their needs and their strengths so that appropriate transition plans can be developed and um, I'm will remain available for questions. Thank you, Linda. Alan Johnson in support. Anne Freed in support. Members, any questions? Otherwise, we'll be moving on to Senate Bill 2774. And we have Director Otani. I'm sorry, what? Sure. Okay. Okay. Senator Otani. I mean, okay. Mass Otani. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, Max Otani, Department of Public Safety. You do stand on our written testimony uh, supporting the intent of this measure. Thank you. Okay, Kat Brady. Aloha on SB 2774, the Huikahi Restorative Circles. This is such a great project that was actually enshrined in the re Hawaii's reentry law in 2007, where restorative circles were recommended to be statewide because it is such a healing process. It brings together family, friends, employers, and it really builds community. So this is a fabulous funded, <laughs> it would be great if it was funded, because since 2005, it's been funded by foundations. That is not sustainable. And yet this project is so terrific, it should be incorporated in the, in the programs of every jail and prison in Hawaii and in Saguaro, because it really brings understanding and it lifts people up and prepares them to come back to their families and the community. Thank you so much. Please support this measure. Thank you, Kat. Uh, Lauren Walker. 
yes, thank you, Senator Nishihara and everyone. Um, Aloha, I'm for the, I'm with the, I think my testimony, I don't know, I submitted testimony both for the Hawaii Friends of Restorative Justice that developed this process that Mark Patterson named Hui Kahi many years ago. And um, I'm also here for the Women's Prison Project. And this process has been very well researched. We first looked at how it brings healing for families and children who have lost a family member to prison. And um, then we looked at um, re reduced repeat crime for people who are out of prison after three years. And it does reduce crime significantly for people who had a circle compared to people who wanted one, but they didn't get one because there were not resources to give them one. So thank you very much. We support this measure. Thank you. Carolyn Ethan, I see. <clears throat> Hello again, uh, Senator Nishihara and uh, Vice Chair of this committee, Senator DeCoy. Um, I don't have the uh, experience with these amazing circles that the previous two um, testifiers bring, but my goodness, we are lucky to have this program rooted among our incarcerated women, seize the opportunity to support and further the circles within Hawaii's Women's Community Correctional Center. The evidence shows they promote healing and reduce recidivism. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Craig Hurai, uh, send in comments. Support. Support. Wendy Gibson Viviani in support. Barbara in support. Diana Bechtel in support. Dara Carlin in support. Members, any questions? Sorry, Chair, you were muted for some of uh, the testifiers that you had said. Can you repeat, please? So what happened here? Well, I'll pick it up from where uh, I called out um, Craig Hurai, Alan Johnson, and Free Carla Adams, Allison, Shannon Rudolph, Wendy Gibson, Viviani, Barbara Polk, Diana Bechtel, and Dara Carlin. None of them were available. I call the names out. Okay, moving on to Senate Bill 2777, uh, Director Otani. Hi, good afternoon, again, Chair Max, if I'm the Department of Public Safety. Um, for the record, the Department strongly adheres to departmental policies regarding searches of inmates, and we're also in compliance with PRIA standards. Therefore, we stand our written testimony in opposition. Yeah, I saw your comments and that has to do with about them no longer being um, incarcerated, right? It's about the cost. Uh, this is this is in regards to searches of female inmates. We're at 277. 777, searches of female inmates. Oh, that one. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, we strongly feel that you know this law is not necessary due to our compliance with policy and clear standards. Thank you. Okay. We are looking over your testimony. You're saying it's not clearly defined on medical emergency and area. Is that why you're opposed to it? Well, oh, and we have policies which you know is open to the public regarding searches, and we are in compliance with uh, the Prison Rape Elimination Act, which you know identifies um, gender-specific issues, especially with females. So we, we do not feel that this law is necessary at this time. So so because you're um, you're following the Tria Act, that uh, you don't feel that. 
this particular bill? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is necessary or you're, you're opposed to for other reasons? Yes, our, our testimony is not position. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lauren Walker, Women's Prison Project. Hi, thanks. Um, yes, we highly support this bill. Women in prison, almost 90% of them are victims of sexual assault and violence in their youth and childhood and their experiences. And it's very damaging for a woman to be searched by a man in prison. And California passed this law. And I think that it is in keeping with PREA. So, um, and I really think that the, the committee should definitely pass this law. Women should not be searched by men. And they should also, this law also it allows if there's an emergency, there is a situation where a man could search a woman if there was an emergency situation. But um, this is, also includes men coming into areas where women are undressing and women in prison talk about this about the men coming in and looking so you know those cases just haven't gone they haven't been reported for pre violations but there are that kind of stuff happens and so men should not be in the law this law would provide that a man who would come into an area where a woman is undressing like a shower bathroom and announce that they are coming in there I mean, how hard is that to do? You know, but they're not doing that. So we support this. Women should have other women search them, not men. You know, especially this, this population that's so fragile, has been abused. Okay, Thanks. well, thank you, thank you. Kathy Betts, comments. Love uh, Hello, Chair. Yeah, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director for the Department of Human Services. And the, the department stands on its written testimony, offering comments and referring to the Department of Public Safety. Thank you. Okay. Darla Carlin in support. I have a question. I'm going to go back to uh, Dr. Otani, the comments that you noted were terminology uh, not clearly defined. If the terminology were more clearly defined, would you support it? We, uh, I got Tommy Johnson here, who's a more expert on this thing. Uh, good morning, Senator. Good afternoon, Senator. I'm the video. Tommy Johnson, the Deputy Director of Corrections. Um, what our testimony is short is saying that our correctional policy on searches of women, COR uh, 0.8.31, is posted on our website for all to review. We're also in compliance with the Federal Prison Rape Elimination Act, so we see no need for this. Uh, unlike a previous testifier stated, male corrections officers do announce themselves when they go into uh, areas uh, primarily with females before they go into the housing units or the restroom or anything like that. The other concern we have with this measure, one, it's not easy. We already follow, but we already have a policy, and we also follow PREA. The second thing is, some of the um, issues in here, are the terms are not defined. For instance, area and medical emergency are not defined, nor does this measure as written address issues of what if there's some kind of structural issue, riot or fire, and a male has to go into a female area. Another thing this measure doesn't account for is that what if we, we don't have a female to fill a particular post and we have to put a male officer in that post? We okay. don't have female correction officers to fill all female posts in a women's community correctional center. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Senate Bill 3137, uh, Mark Patterson. We stand by uh, our testimony and uh, in support and uh, stand by for questions. Okay. Max Otani. Good afternoon, Chair. Max Otani, Department of Public Safety. We stand on written testimony in strong support of this measure. Thank you. Okay, Sandy Ma. Good afternoon again, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Sandy Ma for Common Cause Hawaii. We submitted comments on this bill, SB 3137. Um, 
we are just have a question regarding how this bill to assist people um, to get a state ID, how this bill will interact, interface with um, the automatic voter registration law that was passed last year, which requires um, people who get state IDs uh, to, uh, to be um, part of the ABR system. So we just have a question. We just want to make sure that everyone has the same right to ABR uh, when um, having a state ID, going through the state ID uh, application process. It, it may not be an issue, but I, we just wanted to uh, bring that up. Clarify. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. And I have been remiss. I want to say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't come across with a translation, unfortunately. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, happy Lunar New Year, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Okay, Kathy Betts. Good afternoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, good afternoon, Chair and members. Hey, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director of the Department of Human Services. The department stands on its written testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. Okay. Nicholas Leverett, Grants Investment Manager for the Hawaii Harman Reduction Center, in support. Wendy Gibson Viviani, uh, in support. Esther Gill, in support. Barbara Polk, in support. Diana Bechtel, in support. And Dara Carlin, also in support. Okay, we've taken through all of the testifiers, so um, I think we're going to go to the breakout room for uh, discussion and deliberation. Thank you. Senators, all. sorry, Chair, hold on. Uh, we're gonna. Okay, thank you, Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, any action, and this seems to be one that will eliminate a stumbling block in the the goal for providing civil IDs to our reentering folks is what we want. Please support this bill. Okay, thank you. And now I guess we'll go to the breakout room. Okay, thank you. We're back to the hearing on Tuesday, February 1st, the one o'clock. So on the first bill, Senate Bill 2115, 2115, to pass it as is. Chair votes aye. No discussion. Oh, okay. Ready for a vote? Okay, Chair votes aye. Uh, He's passing uh, Senate Bill 2115 on amended. Uh, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Baker. Aye. Senator Rivera. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, okay. uh, it passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senate Bill 2269, uh, again, the best unamended. Uh, any discussion? Otherwise, Chair Bozai. Members, uh, Senate Bill 2269, uh, Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or nays? Saying none, Chair, uh, your bill is adopted. Thank you. Senate Bill 2305. Chair goes, um, believes that we should pass it on amended. Yeah. 
Members voting on SB 2305, chair votes aye. Recognizing all members here, any reservations or needs? Seeing none, chair, your bill is adopted. Passes. Senate Bill 2373, chair believes that we should uh, pass it unamended. Chair votes aye. Members voting on SB 2373, Chair votes aye. Recognizing all members here, any reservations or needs? Seeing none, Chair, your bill is passed. Thank you. Senate Bill 2433, again, uh, Chair believes that it should pass unamended. Members, Chair votes aye on Senate Bill 2433, recognizing all members here, any reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Favela, any nays? Recognizing none, Chair, your recognition is adopted. Okay, Senate Bill 2452. Uh, want to defer this bill to Thursday, uh, the 3rd of February at 1.30. On Senate Bill 2532, to pass it as is. Chair goes aye. Members uh, voting on Senate Bill 2532, Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here in reservations or nays. Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, Senate Bill 2637 to uh, pass this bill uh, unamended as well. Members voting on SB 2637. Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or nays? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Senate Bill 2639. Uh, again, Chair, I uh, believe we should pass this unamended. Member Senate Bill 2639. Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, Senate Bill 2771. Uh, uh, we'd like to defer this to Thursday the 3rd at 1.30. No, no, 2771 is not the one you're deferring, Senator. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> correct that, correct that. Back it up. I wrote, I wrote it down that way. I'm sorry. This is the bill that we should pass it on the menu. Me Members voting on SB 2771. Chair's, uh, chair's recommendation is passed on the minute. Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or needs? Seeing none, chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Senate Bill 2774. Again, to pass this bill on the minute. Chair votes aye. Members voting on Senate Bill 2774. Uh, Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or needs? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. And Senate Bill 2777, this is the one that we'd like to defer to Thursday, the 3rd at 1.30. Okay. Senate Bill 3137, uh, to pass it as is and with the comments from common cause to be put into the uh, committee report. That brings us down to the uh, end of that agenda. So Chair oh, votes aye. Me me members voting on Senate Bill 3137, Chair votes aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Okay, this brings us to the end of the agenda. Thank you all.